My name is Christine Mann Darden. I'm a native of North Carolina, and I went to work at NASA in 1967. I didn't have a lot of mathematics in high school. The, the highest classes I had were algebra and plane geometry. Math leads to so many things. I found out I was liking the relationship between mathematical equations and the real world, and what a solution to the equation meant in the real world. I was actually a little surprised when I went to college and everybody else who was coming in to major in math had had calculus and trigonometry and analytical geometry. I had the attitude, well, I will just have to start where I am and learn that and keep going because I really wanted to be a mathematician. I was um, a junior in college when the sit-ins started in Greensboro, North Carolina, and so I did participate with some of the students at Hampton Institute University now uh, in marching to the five and dime stores in the city of Hampton, where we would walk in and sit at the lunch counter until the uh, young lady would come and say, well, we can't serve you, and then we would get up and leave, and then some others would come in and sit down. People who really liked math and everything would get an attitude from their teacher about girls don't do math. And I think that's unfortunate and I think we need to make sure that their teachers enjoy the subjects that they are teaching. I taught for two years in high school and one year in college. Teachers have a tremendous influence on students. If a teacher loves a subject and you see the energy and the passion that the teacher has for a subject, very often that same passion is conveyed to the students in the classroom. I was at a briefing at NASA one day when a senator came in and there was a speaker talking about testing in wind tunnels and he was talking about Reynolds number and that is um, a type of wind tunnel where the data coming out of that wind tunnel is a better correlation with the data that you get with an airplane flying through the air. The senator stood up and he said, listen, I don't understand a word you are talking about, and if you are not able to break it down to where I can understand it, I'm going to leave. And he sat back down and the speaker was not able to change his presentation on the spot or to, to go back and, and maybe compare it with something that he would understand. And in um, four or five minutes, the senator did get up and leave. It is great when you can compare or make an analogy of something with what you're explaining such that maybe people can understand what it is you are talking about uh, at, a, at a different level. It was really at Virginia State, I think, that uh, where I got the fellowship to do research in aerosol physics, which was the light scattering of non-spherical particles. That paid for me to get a master's degree, and it put me back in the aerospace world to make me realize how much I really enjoyed that and the capabilities of what the aerospace people do. That was probably a very big step in, in leading me to an aerospace.